on Sunrise. A crash landing in the middle of the interstate. The plane hit a car. Amazingly, no one was hurt. We'll hear from a witness who saw it all happen. A frantic rush to save lives. While we wait on a vaccine to be approved, doses are already being shipped across the country. And it could come to Minnesota sooner than you think. President Trump airing his grievances in a 45-minute Facebook video. Who owns it, which we don't know. Where are the votes counted? Our Verify team shows us why you shouldn't believe everything you hear online. Temperatures just a bit warmer this morning compared to yesterday morning. I'm taking a look at afternoon highs and just how long the dry spell will last. And Houston, we're almost ready for liftoff. Elon Musk maps out his plans for space travel and it goes far beyond going to the moon. It's Thursday, December 3rd. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Good morning, it's Decision Day in Minnesota. Today we'll learn the fate of winter prep sports after a whirlwind year thanks to COVID-19. Sunrisers, what's the right move here? Should the kids still be able to play? Chime in on what you think should happen with winter sports. All you have to do is text us at 763-797-7215. We get all your responses right here in the studio. So yeah, we'll man. share some of those a little bit. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right, in the weather department, if you like um, mild temperatures, I think you're going to like today. But keep in mind, it's all relative. I'm sure most of us are probably thinking it's still cold. Yeah, well, I was looking at data from last December, uh, obviously December 2019, and we were already hitting the negatives. So, uh, yeah, you got to take the 27 and the wind chill to go along with it at 18 and smile through it. West wind at about nine miles per hour, making that wind chill value again in the teens. But at least we're already above the average air temperature by the time we hit later this morning at 34, 38 by one o'clock. Highs today, 42 for the Twin Cities, 40 Brainerd, and then you'll see St. Cloud at 41. Menominee, Wisconsin, 37. All right, guy, here at 602, if you're getting ready to head out, uh, nothing to slow you down out here. Here's a live look, 62 at 43rd Avenue. Down in the South Metro, no crashes whatsoever. Drive times, if you're coming from the South Metro, the Southern Suburbs, Bloomington towards 494, uh, pretty quiet so far this morning. Thanks, Alicia. New this morning, 35W now clear near New Brighton after a plane crash landed in the middle of the interstate. Uh, these are brand new images posted overnight by the Ramsey County Deputies Federation. Uh, Gordon is live in New Brighton, close to where all this happened. What can you tell us about this, Gordon? Well, Chris, this had to have been quite a shock for drivers here on 35W. Definitely not something that you ever expect to happen while you're out driving on the road. And being that this happened around 930 last night, there were quite a few cars out here when it happened. The state patrol tells us that one vehicle did slam into the plane shortly after it landed, but no one was injured in this crash. Uh, not the driver of that vehicle or the pilot of the plane. The state patrol tells us that the plane was a small engine Balanca Viking plane. We still don't know why the pilot decided to land it on the interstate, but we did hear from one witness who saw it all happen. Andrew DeWitt was driving on 35W when he saw the plane out of the corner of his eye. It landed right in front of him. He swerved to miss it. He later saw a car behind him smash into the plane, and that's when he decided to call 911. I just see like this big thing and all of a sudden it goes down and very low, I don't know, it just lands in front of me and I hit my brakes. As soon as it hit the barrier, it did it like did like a 180. I'm thankful that no one got hurt because um, that's something that I still don't have like words for it. That's like five seconds away from death basically. Now, we still don't know where this plane was headed or uh, where it took off from, but we do know that the two closest airports to this location are the Crystal Airport, which is just a few miles west of here, and the Anoka County Blaine Airport, which is a few miles north of here. We're hoping to get some more details from the State Patrol later this morning. Chris, back to you. A plane landing on a highway, not something you hear often. Luckily, no one has heard. Thanks, Gordon. New this morning, crime is out of control. That's a message coming from neighbors in parts of Minneapolis. A public listening session with the city council stretched into the early morning hours overnight. Kaya is breaking down the plans to make our city safer. That's all coming up at 630. This morning, we're tracking big developments overnight in the fight against the coronavirus. Let's get you caught up on the three things you need to know. In just a few hours, we could know what the future is for winter sports in Minnesota. Today, the Minnesota State High School League will decide if there will be a season, and if so, how it will look for athletes. 
The White House COVID task force says our nation is in a quote, very dangerous place, not only with illness, but income. As of this morning, there are two COVID relief bills on the table in D.C. One is a $900 billion bipartisan compromise bill. The other is a smaller one, which the president favors. With the U.K. preparing to roll out vaccines next week and the U.S. close behind, polling suggests 58% of Americans are likely to get vaccinated. But 42% of Americans say they won't. According to the World Health Organization, around 70% of us need the COVID vaccine to achieve immunity. Sunrise is live this morning tracking the latest on the COVID-19 vaccine. In fact, Google searches for vaccine distribution are up 1000% and that's just this morning. So the question remains, when will we get the vaccine here in Minnesota? So here is a timeline. On December 10th, the FDA is looking into emergency use authorization into the COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer. And just yesterday, uh, the, we learned that the following day on December 11th, the federal government is going to issue an emergency use authorization of the vaccine, meaning an unapproved vaccine can be used during a public health emergency. And according to the Minnesota Department of Health and Governor Tim Walls, on December 18th, vaccinations may start here in Minnesota after healthcare employees are trained to give out the shots. The big question remains, Who's going to be in line first for this vaccine? Well, the first round, that's likely going to go to healthcare workers right on the front lines. However, firefighters, for example, fall within the second round. And there's questions surrounding whether they should be higher up on that list. I'm hearing literally every day from police departments, sheriff's departments, and fire departments that are having uh, COVID impact their ability to do the right thing. The Minnesota Department of Public Safety also says there's about 500 fire departments here in Minnesota and nearly 100 of them have had major COVID-19 outbreaks. And Health Commissioner Jan Malcolm did say there's not going to be enough initial doses to vaccinate everybody who's eligible in that very first round tier. Uh, but that being in the first category is very critical to get that vaccinated shot. So we should get more details in the coming days, even weeks uh, from the governor and the health department. Yeah, doses are going to be at a premium. So a lot of people yeah. are going to be all ears for that. Thanks, Alicia. A live picture from the White House this morning where President Trump's focus remains locked on his election grievances. He posted this 46 minute video on Facebook. We want to be upfront with you. It's filled with false statements. Our verified team broke it down minute by minute so you know the truth. President Trump posted a 46 minute presentation to social media Wednesday. So let's talk specifics. This is Michigan. At 631 in the morning, a vote dump of 149,772 votes came in unexpectedly. False. We investigated this claim 27 days ago. The charts seemed to show a spike, but it was actually due to a typo. Instead of 15,000, someone put in 150,000. The error was only online, not in an official vote count, and quickly fixed. The official numbers were never wrong. In one Michigan county, as an example, that used Dominion Systems, they found that nearly 6,000 votes had been wrongly switched from Trump to Biden. False. Fact checked 20 days ago. A county clerk in Michigan forgot to update a voting machine, which caused the online preliminary report to be off. But they caught the issue because the county had a paper count of the votes, which showed the difference. The votes had never been switched, and the issue only affected the preliminary count online. But that wasn't the only claim the president made about Dominion. Who owns it, which we don't know? Where are the votes counted, which we think are counted? in foreign countries, not in the United States. We do actually know who runs Dominion. Their CEO is John Poulos. He testified before Congress about voting security in January of this year. My name is John Poulos, and I am the chief executive officer of Dominion Voting Systems. Government documents from the Election Assistance Commission do show that Dominion is an American company headquartered in Denver, Colorado. As for the claim that votes were counted outside the United States, there's literally no evidence to back that up. We broke this claim down 13 days ago with the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, and VerifiedVoting.org, showing that almost all U.S. states have a paper trail, and those votes are counted in the counties that they're cast in. Keep in mind, 
While there are still ongoing lawsuits in some states, so far, none of them have turned up issues that would change the outcome of the election or indicate a scheme to rig or steal the election. Have something you'd like us to verify? Send an email to verify at care11.com or reach out on Facebook and Twitter. We're tracking breaking news out of Southern California. A massive fire is quickly spreading. Right now, deputies are going door to door in parts of San Diego County, telling people to pack their things and get out. Here's a better look at the scene. As of right now, 200 homes have been evacuated. Power has been shut off to the entire area. At 15% contained, officials worry flames could explode with heavy winds expected today. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. Bail policy in Minnesota is changing. Yesterday in a meeting, county and state attorneys agreed no one should be held in jail because they are poor. So bail will no longer be required for various crimes such as check forging. However, circumstances will be considered, including whether the accused is a repeat offender. Police say they are investigating the persistent vandalism at the home of an 89-year-old Minneapolis grandmother. This is new video from Frances Mosley's home near Lake Nicole where she says she's been targeted for an eighth time. Anyone with information is asked to call police. COVID test sites are getting ready for winter. Health Partners has started to transition to indoor and winterized drive up COVID testing sites. Most locations across the Twin Cities and Western Wisconsin will move to off campus sites to provide an indoor drive through option. And it's official. Eddie Rosario is officially a free agent. The 29 year old outfielder has spent his entire major league career with the Twins. And that's your Thursday morning rush. Guy, where are we headed with the one thing weather? Yeah, kiddos, great day to get outside right after school today. 37 already by lunchtime. We're still in the upper 30s and low 40s by 4 o'clock. And a look over in the East Metro. If you're waking up there, it's looking pretty good. This is 94 at County Road 19 near Keats Avenue. Traffic's pretty quiet. We're going to give you a closer look if you're waking up in the East Metro coming up. Two is always better than one, but does that apply to COVID vaccines? Our verified team digs into the question. Then the holiday shopping season is just starting to pick up at the Mall of America. What they're doing to keep you safe from COVID-19. Plus, start packing. Elon Musk says he'll send you to Mars very soon how he got to his soaring prediction.